Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaravall from CK Research, and I'm here in Austin, Texas at Amazon's AI Chip Labs. I'm with Ron Diamant, who VP and Distinguished Engineer for Amazon. And uh, um, uh, we're going to talk about AI and chips and all kinds of exciting stuff. And who knew Amazon actually did chips, right? Uh, but before we get into that, maybe just a, a quick bio on yourself, a little introduction of what you do for Amazon. Sure. So my name is Ron. Uh, I'm the chief architect of Trainium our machine learning chips for accelerating AI workloads here at AWS. And we at Amazon have been building chips for quite a while now. We've been building chips for networking and data center operations, Graviton, which are, is our data center CPU, and of course, Trainium, our machine learning accelerator. Yeah, and so um, I want to talk about the, the chips, and there's, these are specifically for AI, right? Um, but before we get into that, maybe just a quick um, just thoughts from you on what, what, where are we with AI right now? It's like, it, it, there's a lot of hype. I saw this MIT study that said like lots and lots of companies fail with their projects, but yet everybody I talked to is moving forward with it. So in that hype cycle, where are we? And when you think back in your career to other technologies that maybe had a hype cycle, how is this different? So if I zoom out for a second, before starting to talk about hype or no hype, and when I look at the AWS usage that we're seeing from customers, we're seeing an exponential increase in the amount of AI workloads that are running on AWS, both on the training side and on the inference side. On the inference side, it's very clear. We're seeing more and more benefits of AI uh, algorithms across a variety uh, of applications these days, and that's what's driving the demand. And on the training side, we're seeing that the more compute we invest into the training cycle, the more intelligence we get on the other side. So seeing this exponentially increasing compute requirement, we were incentivized and, and, and almost forced to go and provide our customers with very optimized solutions to run their, their AI workloads. Okay, so while there may be some hype, it's real, people are doing it, and it just seems like when I talk to customers, they can't get enough AI. Correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk training specifically. Um, uh, you know, when I think about the world of chips that we live in today, there's so many silicon manufacturers today, right? Why, why did Amazon head down the path that they felt they had to build their own chip? And so, and then, so explain that and then what training exactly is. So uh, at Amazon, we always think about, or we always prefer providing our customers with a lot of choice. Uh, we definitely provide quite a few AI accelerators to our customers, including GPUs and, and a few other options. But looking at the market, we were compelled to provide our own solutions as well, as we we're convinced that we can provide better price performance for, for our customers across a wide variety of training and inference workloads. That's what triggered us and motivated us to invest a significant engineering effort into building our own chips. And right now, we're seeing that many customers are using these chips in order to build state-of-the-art models. Uh, we partnered with Anthropic, who are building their state-of-the-art models on top of Trainium with a Rainier cluster, a cluster of about half a million devices, training to devices that they use to train and serve their models. And even internally, when we serve state-of-the-art models through Amazon Bedrock, more than half of the traffic that is coming in is served via the Trainium chips. Okay, and where are we in the Trainium lifecycle right now? I think we're on the second version, the third coming. This is actually our third, third AI version. accelerator. We call it Trainium 2. The first generation was Inferentia, second oh. generation was Trainium 1, and the third one now is Trainium 2. Uh, we already pre-announced Trainium 3 that is coming soon, but it's not available for users yeah. just yet. Now, uh, Inferentia and Trainium still both exist, and what's the difference between the two? Inferentia was more optimized for a certain set of inference workloads, specifically non-memory heavy workloads, Trainium can serve both inference and training workloads. And as of today, Trainium 2 is highly optimized for both training and inference for large language models. Now, uh, we, uh, we did, you had a little press event here today, and I thought one of the more interesting slides was when you talked about how Trainium isn't a CPU, it's not a GPU, right, in the classical sense where you think of a CPU being a single-threaded processor, and for all, for layman, in layman's terms, a GPU is a parallel processor, but uh, Trainium actually works differently than both of those, right? And so, so talk about that design. Again, can you maybe double click on that and how that's different than what we think of as a GPU and the way they work today? 
Yeah, definitely. So first of all, when we started building Trinium, we inspected the workload that we we're going to accelerate, specifically machine learning workloads and neural networks in particular. And we kind of took a, a clean slate. We didn't want to align ourselves to one of the existing architectures, but rather said, how can we best support this workload? We ended up uh, believing that the, the best way to support large linear algebra workloads, which are the, the workhorse behind neural networks, uh, would be with an architecture that is called a systolic array. That's an architecture where you arrange a grid of processing elements in a two-dimensional array, and only the edge of the array is interacting with memory and then passing the, the data to the other processing elements. In that way, we can achieve much superior power efficiency. And of course, when we, when we achieve this power efficiency, it drives our cost structure down, and we get to pass these cost savings to our customers. Yeah, and actually I find a lot of Amazon innovation is always focused on driving the customer's cost down. Absolutely, uh, yes. with, You know, compared to what, what's out there. And so, um, you know, given that tends to be, uh, you know, the singular focus for all of Amazon, uh, maybe uh, can you give us some examples of customers that are on Tranium and some of the results that they've seen? Yes, definitely. So one of the, the uh, our, our major partners is Anthropic. They're building a model uh, that is called Claude. They recently uh, launched Claude Sonnet 3.5. It's the best coding model in the industry right now. And it's trained and served, meaning running inference on Trainium 2. Uh, they were able to significantly improve their cost structure. And as of today, they're running the majority of their first party serving on Trainium. On top of that, uh, they're also serving their model via Amazon Bedrock, which is our AI serving uh, uh, service. Um, and as I mentioned before, the majority of bedrock traffic on, also runs on training too. Yeah, and so is it only for AI model providers or do general enterprises use this as well? I mean, every, every person building a machine learning model has an opportunity to drive performance up and cost down by leveraging training too. Okay, now, uh, and so almost certainly customers will see a, a pretty significant cost savings. Right, and it's yeah. workload dependent. I yeah. want to make sure that people understand that. Uh, so many machine learning workloads will achieve state-of-the-art performance and price performance on Trinium, but every workload behaves a little different. And that's why at, at Amazon, we, we offer a variety of different hardware infrastructure platforms. So you get to choose and pick the most suitable infrastructure for you. Yeah, and uh, what I find really interesting too is even within the compute architecture, right, you've designed the networking technology that allows you to scale up and scale across. And, and uh, you'd mentioned Project Rainier, which is really about scale across, right? And, uh, and so uh, help the audience understand what Rainier is and what you hope to accomplish with it. Definitely. So, uh, and announced at last year's reInvent, right? Correct. So we yeah. announced Project Rainier in last year's reInvent. It's a massive AI cluster that we built based on Trinium 2. It has more than half a million devices. And uh, our partner, Anthropic, is using that cluster to train their state-of-the-art models. And they're also using that cluster in order to serve inference requests from their customers and directly uh, provide responses, uh, ML-based ML responses to them. Um, there's a real challenge. I, I, al always, al I often jokingly say that many people can build a supercomputer, a single one. But there's only a few in the industry that can build a supercomputer that can scale for about a million devices. And that's what we're doing with Project Rainier. We're using Amazon's expertise in building large data centers and scaling them very rapidly and very reliably to provide state-of-the-art compute performance for AI. Yeah, so this will be um, a massive unit of compute, if you will, a single unit that spans multiple geographic locations. Correct. Which yes. is fascinating. Right, and so when you think about the implications of that, there's, I mean, there's so many things you can do. Now, one of the things I like about Amazon's model is you mentioned Bedrock, which gives you choice of models. You also support every processor out there, right? And so, in fact, I think uh, there's more NVIDIA workloads running in Amazon than anywhere else. And so, if I'm a customer out there and I see the choice of AMD, Intel, Tranium, you know, um, uh, you know, NVIDIA, uh, how do I enter navigate that and how do I know what's best for me? I think the best way to do and what we encourage our customers to do is to benchmark. 
So try the NVIDIA platform, try the x86 platform, try Graviton and try Trinium. Uh, we're quite confident for, that for a wide variety of workloads, we will be able to provide you with the best price performance out there, but there is no, uh, there is no uh, way to replace hands-on experience and benchmarking for yourself. Okay, and of course that's easy to do in the Amazon cloud because you can just spin up those instances and try it out. Right. So uh, I did want to ask you about uh, Rufus, which is the AI shopping assistant that runs in Amazon.com. So I'm, I think everybody watching this probably uses Amazon.com and has seen Rufus, but that actually runs on Trainium and Inferentia, right? Right, it's right. Yeah. And so what kind of results have you seen? Like how much Rufus have you seen and what kind of results have you seen there? Right, so we've been partnering with the Rufus team uh, quite significantly. They're, they're doing something pretty unique. They're running on a mixed cluster of some inferential devices and some training devices. And why did they do that? Uh, because they wanted a lot of capacity. For, okay. <laughs> for Prime Day, they wanted to run on more than 100,000 devices and they just got, got every chip that they could get their hands on. Um, and anyways, they, they got 70% cost savings by moving from another hardware platform into the inferential and training platform. All right, well, thanks for the update on Rufus. Uh, I did want to come back uh, to the acquisition of Epinerma Labs. Uh, from what I understand, it's year 10, happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, thank uh, you. It turns 10 within Amazon. Um, you know, it is an Israeli-based company, and I'm just curious as to, um, you know, with so much geopolitical stuff going on in the supply chain, um, where's the manufacturing done? Um, you know, how much is done in the U.S. versus overseas, things like that? Yeah, so, so it is our 10th, 10th anniversary yeah. within Amazon. We actually had a visit from uh, Andy Jesse and Matt Garman in Israel with the, the, to visit the core and Akuna team, uh, which the team appreciated quite a yeah. lot. Um, with regards to where development is done, we own the entire manufacturing process, design, uh, silicon design and manufacturing, uh, which allows us to provide better cost structure for our customers. And as for the AI uh, chip itself, training and inferential chips themselves, we build them entirely out of the US. So they're specifically not built in Israel. Yeah. Uh, more than half of the development is done here in Austin, where we are right now. And some of it is done in the Bay Area as well. Um, other product lines are, are more distributed across the world with some uh, development happening out of Israel as well. Yeah, and I think when everybody thinks about Amazon, they know at the rate of US or Amazon.com. And you guys build a lot of chips though. Right? Can you, do you have any kind of metric that helps us understand like exactly how many, you know, chips have been, uh, you know, produced by you? Yeah, sure. So, so first of all, I kind of jokingly say that we're the biggest semiconductor company that no one has yeah. ever yeah. heard yeah. of. Yeah. Because yeah. We kind of tucked in AWS, yeah. but we're one of the, the top five uh, customers for TSMC uh, for advanced process nodes, five and yeah. three nanometer. Um, we're doing things a little differently than others. Uh, we, we really value speed in order to get to scale. Uh, and because of that, out of the last 12 chips that we've built, 10 of them ramped up to more than 1 million units uh, in the very first tape out, what we call A0 silicon. Oh. And that's quite unique in the semiconductor industry. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, that's probably a good place to wrap up. Just last question, without getting into anything that's going to get you in trouble from an NDA perspective, uh, we got reInvent coming up. Uh, what's next for you guys? What are you, what are you thinking about? So, so we are definitely going to announce new products and pre-invent. Okay. You'll see announcement across all three product lines that we discussed, Nitro, yeah. Graviton, and Trinium. And that's no secret because there has been every year for the last, for the foreseeable uh, that for, I can remember, yeah. And what I can say, and I don't think I'm spilling much, is that they'll be faster, they'll be, yeah. be more cost efficient, and there's going to be a lot of exciting innovation that yeah. we, we achieved in the last year. And with all the stuff going on with AI, you need more speed, we need to bring costs down and we need to bring power utilization down. And it seems like you're tapping all of those. 100%. Yeah. All right, anything else you want to add? Nothing else. Come, no. come and try training them out. Yeah, okay. And uh, all right, so on that note, uh, on behalf of Ron Diamond, I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like, and also hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.